Another John Doe case. This one was identified in 2015, around 20 years after he was found dead. Which is a good thing again, because it didn't take as long as some of the other cases. Regardless, today I wanted to share with you the story of Jason Callahan, who was at first known as Grateful Doe or Jason Doe. In this case, we're dealing with a John Doe that was killed in a car accident. So at the time when they found his body, they could identify one person, but apparently Jason at the time was hitchhiking. So the other victim that died in the car crash could be identified. However, Jason in this case was just a mysterious figure that was traveling somewhere without anyone knowing who he actually was. Even the family members of the other person that was found dead didn't know him, of course. That made this case kind of a mystery at the time. Now he was killed in one vehicle accident along with the driver, Michael Hager. After the car in which they were riding crashed into a pair of trees on US Route 58 West around 1.30 p.m. on June 26, 1995. Neither man was wearing a seat belt which lightly contributed to each of their deaths. Found with Callan's body were two Grateful Dead tickets from Washington DC which had been sculpted, a dollar in quarters and a yellow BIC lighter. Now just for those of you that don't know what Grateful Dead actually stands for, well it's basically an American rock band. I don't know them myself, maybe you do, but just in case anybody was wondering what do I mean by that, what sort of tickets are that, now you know. Now a letter was also found, depending on sources, either in John Doe's pocket or near the crash site, reading to Jason, sorry we had to go, see you around, call me, then a number and... It ended with Caroline T and Caroline O. And then it said bye. The phone number on the letter lacked an area code and never led to any additional clues. The letter also contained a small drawing that some speculate may be that of Jerry Garcia. The tickets were dated June 24th, 1995 and June 25th, 1995. Neither of the Carolines have ever been identified. The young man, estimated to be between the ages of 15 and 21 years old, had brown eyes with long curly brown or dark blonde hair that had been dyed a reddish color. There was a tattoo of a star on his upper left arm and another possible tattoo which was faded on his right arm, both of which appeared to have been amateurishly executed. He was wearing a beaded necklace and his left ear had been pierced but he did not wear an earring. There was a scar found on his back and he was Caucasian had no apparent dental work as his third molars were visible, however his teeth were fairly well cared for. At the time of the accident he was wearing a red tie-dyed Grateful Dead t-shirt, lavy jeans, white socks and black villa running shoes. The vehicle's driver, however, was identified as Michael E. Hager, 21, who may have picked the John Doe up as a hitchhiker and who authorities hypothesize may have fallen asleep at the wheel. As neither of them had drugs or alcohol in their bodies, it had been suggested that Hager may have agreed to transfer the John Doe because of their similar styles of dress, as they both appeared to be fans of the Grateful Dead. Authorities attempted to identify the John Doe through fingerprint analysis with the aid of national databases, but were unsuccessful. When interviewed, Hager's family could not identify the unknown passenger who had been reported to have been riding in Hager's car when he stopped to give his father a letter in Williamsburg, Virginia. However, a detective from the area stated that this claim was not accurate and Hager was alone when he stopped to visit his father. It is speculated that the unidentified young man had actually been picked up between Fairfax and Gloucester, Virginia. Due to the severity of the laceration on John Doe's face, Mortuary photographs could not be released to the public, although a facial reconstruction was later released. In 2012, another reconstruction was created by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The man who had originally bought the tickets found in John Doe's pocket did not remember the person he had sold them to. At least 221 missing persons were ruled out as possible identities of the victim. Now this is where the case finally got some development after many many years because in 2015 photographs surfaced of a young man wearing similar clothing to that worn by the John Doe and who bore a strong resemblance to the reconstruction images. 
The person in these photographs was named Jason and was described to have been a fan of Grateful Dead. He had not been heard from since 1995 and was known to have lived in both Illinois and South Carolina. It had not yet been verified whether this was indeed the John Doe as his former roommates and other friends did not recall Jason's last name. The New York Post, the Daily Mail and BuzzFeed were some of the newspapers that covered the story. Now in January 2015, law enforcement conducted a DNA test to see if the John Doe was the same as Jason Patrick Callahan, the son of a 63-year-old woman who had not seen or heard from him since 1995, when he left home to follow the Grateful Dead. That is so shocking to me, man. It's, it sounds so innocent because in this case, he clearly wasn't someone that was going to run away from home or anything. So his mother in this case was like, he's going to see a band, he's going to have a good time. And then 20 years later, you finally found out where he is. But sadly, he is dead. Must be absolutely heartbreaking in a way. Callahan, who was identified as the young man eventually in the photographs, is described as having been a white male with wavy blonde hair and brown eyes standing between 5 feet 10 and 6 feet tall and weighed around 160 pounds. Callahan, if he was alive, would have been 38 at the time. He was not reported missing by his mother until 2015. Well, that's also kind of strange though if you think about it, but it is what it is, I guess. Lieutenant Joey Crosby, spokesman for Myrtle Beach Police, stated that Callahan's mother failed to file a report with police due to the nomadic nature of Grateful Dead fans. She attempted to report it when he went missing but didn't know which jurisdiction to report it to, he said. His family also stated that they presumed he had gone to live on his own elsewhere. After initial tests proved inconclusive, additional DNA testing confirmed that the body was indeed that of a Jason Callahan. So this is a story of a young man that actually went to a music festival or at least to a live performance of a band, that was the goal. Then ended up sadly getting in a car accident and dying not being identified for 20 years. But what's even more bizarre are these two girls that left that note, right? The Caroline. Whoever they are, if it's one person or multiple with the same name, I don't know. And that's also a mystery because surely if they wrote a personal letter like that to the guy, they must know him in some way. So I wonder if these two women actually realize that he is dead or not. It's kind of disturbing also. I don't know what their relationships was to each other. Regardless, maybe one day they will realize what happened to him. Because it might be important information. Who knows, maybe they're also wondering where the hell he went for 20 years, right? It's just so sad how these cases sometimes go with these unsolved murder victims. However, this was not a murder victim though. This was just a tragic accident, it seems. That can always occur when driving a car or hitchhiking. I'm glad at least it wasn't a murder, it's less insane that way, but it's still very very sad that an accident occurred. Regardless, I hope both he and the driver are resting in peace, and as always, dear viewer, have sweet dreams.